Okay, we've come to uh, Stamol Park Beach, yes. uh, south of Sydney in New South Wales. Um, and I understand you did some research here um, a few years ago. Yeah, about uh, 20 years ago. About 20 years ago. Um, looking at the beach and, and how it might be related, and how its morphology might be related to climate. It, it was a nice little study. This is uh, about uh, a kilometer and a half long beach. It's compartmentalized. Right. It's by compartmentalized, it's a little sink for sand. Okay. So the sand you see on this beach is the sand you've got. There's no river coming in. Right, and it's got two headlands either, two headlands either end. And so the sand can't escape. Right. And it, the idea is the sand was swept up here with sea level rise right. 7,000 years ago. Yeah. And uh, it's built up a beach system and a dune system that uh, the dune system was stabilized, except for a short period in the 60s and 70s. Yeah. And so you should be able to uh, measure confidently the, the budget of sand in the, in the beach compartment. Because it's so contained. It's contained. Yeah. You're not gaining anything, you're not losing anything. Right. And what we were able to do was to, uh, first of all, tackle some air photogrammetry principles. Right. There's no air photograph. Can I measure a shoreline position from an air photograph? Yes. And you can with very sophisticated equipment. But the Americans designed a system based upon a single oblique photograph. All right. If, if you knew some reference points in it, yeah. that you could uh, turn the photograph into a plan map right. and measure off it. Okay. And the uh, best example I've got is in the first Gulf War where somebody did something wrong on the fourth floor of the Baghdad Hilton and the U.S. dropped a cruise missile through the fourth floor window. Oh, right. And they Goodness. did that because they knew exactly where yeah. the fourth floor window was in the Baghdad Hilton. Goodness. And they probably got that location from people, tourists, taking oblique photographs right. walking along the street. Oh, I see. Um, we applied the techniques to this beach, large scale, yeah. uh, tourist poster. Right. Uh, we measured 26 control points with land survey, came down with laser equipment, surveyed it all in. Okay. And uh, took these points off the uh, poster and bunged them into the program. We uh, left half of them out and put half in, and right. we predicted where the other half were based upon the half we put in. I see. Right. And uh, calculate the accuracy, and the accuracy at that point, first go, came out 46 centimeters. Wow. <laughs> That's pretty accurate. <laughs> That's incredibly accurate. Yeah. So the next thing was, well, can we do this with an ordinary snapshot that your yes. granny took yeah. when she was a teenager? Right. So we tried a Mickey Mouse instamatic photo. Right. And the accuracy came out half a meter. <laughs> wow. so then we had, by that that time, we were using uh, 10, 12 control points. Yes. So we're yeah. about, we need a minimum of six, so we okay. overdid it. Um, and then we thought, well, we need a, a lot more photographs than we could get. So we looked around for old photographs of this beach. Yeah. We got $500, so we put two ads in the weekend popular newspapers in Australia. Right. A picture of this beach. Saying, have you got a picture of this beach? Yes. Yeah. Will you aid some research? Send us your photograph. We guarantee we'll send it back oh, to you. Right, yes. Yeah. <laughs> and we got a good response. Wow. Uh, we did other things. We searched uh, railway uh, records. Uh, the railway postcards and things like that. Postcards, yeah. Rail yeah, shops, yeah. Uh, historical societies. And the end result, we got 105 photographs over a 100-year period. Wow, that's, that's, 90, that's pretty good. 90-year period. Right. And uh, then we were able to film those photographs. Uh, some had telegraph poles in them. We came up with a little trick that the top of the telegraph pole yeah. has the same x y coordinates. Because it's a vertical it, structure. It's at the bottom. Yeah, yeah. And we knew the height of the telegraph pole. We right. figured out that. We yeah. surveyed them in. Yeah. So we could use the shadow tip. Okay and calculate the angle and figure out the height of the pole. Oh, I see. And we could calculate with very simple calculations yeah. what day of the year and month that the oh. picture was taken. So wow, we could date yeah. the photographs. That's really clever, yeah. And some photographs that were sent in, people actually wrote the date on the back. So we were able to put together for this 90 year, yeah. year period yeah. a sequence of photographs. Right, that's incredible. Yeah. And we measured the budget, Yeah. Uh, measured the high tide line. Yeah. Uh, we could pick out seasonal effects, we could pick out storm effects. And you mapped this all from the photographs that were yeah. provided? Yeah, and wow. uh, we mapped everything, actually rips, waves, bars. I uh, haven't done anything with that, I just concentrated upon the high tide position. Yeah. And uh, we were able to show that the beach uh, really wasn't, it was going through cycles of change. Yeah. Uh, 
be able to show that if there was a storm uh, that took sand off the beach, it took nine months for the sand to come back onto the beach. Right. You could predict that there would be good bars six months later. Wow. And the sand would be all on the beach yeah. after nine months. So if you had a storm in winter, you could predict, well, in January, February, which is the surfing season and yeah. the beach season, that we'd have good bar conditions. Right. Well, if you had a late storm, yeah. an October storm or something like that, you could say, well, you got Buckley's are doing anything on this beach, the bar's right. are in. Oh, I see. They won't be in for the tourist season. No. All no, right. Um, <laughs> we did another calculation. We started looking at uh, simple uh, volume calculation, how much sand had moved around the beach. Yeah. And we're opposite a sand dune that was uh, vegetated when colonization occurred. They cleared it mobilized in the 60s and 70s and yeah. they actually mined it for sand. Oh, did they? Well, here on the beach? Uh, the yeah. sand dunes. Oh, right, I see, yeah. You yeah. can pull up at the park and fill up your uh, kiosk, fill up your trailer. Well, just just shovel it in? Yeah, 50 cents and go away. Right, right. And we figured that that had affected the sand supply by 5 meters, the yeah. high tide position. Oh, the, the general altitude and the elevation yeah, of the beach? Yeah, just slowly the beach, the sand drifted into the sand dunes and the high tide retreated by about 5 meters. Right. Uh, the variation over time, like we were getting a hundred meter variation in that shoreline position. Okay. With no sand gain, no sand loss, no. the sand will move offshore, okay. could move along the coast, then it will come back after cycle right. storms. Okay. We were then able to relate it to rainfall, yeah. uh, storms, yeah. Uh, El Nino Southern Oscillation. Right. And basically we could found that uh, if it didn't rain, we were in El Nino. Okay. Uh, and there were no storms, the beach would have creeped. I see. And if it rained, uh, there were storms, uh, it was a La Nina period, the yeah. beach would erode. I see. And we could separate it out, and the most important facet for beach yeah. uh, accretion erosion was rainfall. Why is that? And it was working through the water table. Oh, I see. High water table. Yeah. The water table leaks through the front of the so beach. So this is a coastal aquifer now? Aquifer. Yeah. Sand grains don't quite stick together as well when the water's coming through the beach at low tide. Okay. A bit more lubrication. And so yeah. you can move the sand a little bit easier. Okay. And it erodes. Okay. And during a drought, yeah. wave comes up onto the beach. Yeah. Water table's low. It's dry and High tide, yeah. the water sinks into the beach and deposits the sand. Oh, I see. So during droughts, the beach builds up. Yeah. During wet periods, the beach erodes. That's incredible. And that was a major factor, but there was this combination. Yeah. Of rain, uh, La Nina then, yeah. uh, part of the Southern Oscillation. Yeah. Lack of storm, there were more storms than the beach would be away. Wow. So we've got this physical feature in the landscape, which, I mean, we all associate vegetation and, uh, and things like that with, with climate change and so on, but, but a beach actually seems to respond to changes in the in the El Nino La Nina cycle. Yeah, it yeah. was just beating along. Yeah. Strong heartbeat. Wow. Uh, That's really amazing. Yeah. Incredible. So um, in terms of what we see here today, is it I mean you did the study twenty years ago. Uh, would much have changed in the, in that time in terms of how the beach is responding to things like El Nino and maybe uh, climate change uh, and global warming? Coming back on the beach today, we we've had a stormy period. We we've had but we've had six years of drought. Right. And low rainfall. Okay. And um, El Nino uh, disappeared. La Nina came back. So up in Queensland, it rained buckets. Right. Sydney, it rained buckets, and that's only 50 uh, yeah. miles or 60 70 yeah. kilometers in the north. Right. It didn't rain much in Wollongong. Oh. It didn't rain much in these suburbs. Right. We've seen uh, some storm action along the coast, but this beach, just looking at this, is a drought beach. Right. This is lack of rain. Yeah. Uh, this is El Nino conditions. Okay. No storms. And yeah. Even though we've had storms in the last six months, with yeah. some rains coming back. This beach, looking at today, you can see the signature. It's a, it's a drought state. Right. And it's right. a nice, secreted beach. Yeah. Built up wide. Yeah. Still got some bars there, and the bars are there probably because of the storms in the last yeah. about four or five months. But it hasn't been enough to erode this sand right. that's piled up right. in the last six, seven years. Well, it's a beautiful spot, and it's fascinating research that you've undertaken here. It was uh, spot yeah. on. It was excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Look, good luck. Nice beach. Yeah. Compartmentalized and tripped across some techniques. And uh, as I was saying to you earlier, uh, the competing facilities that exist with PCs now wouldn't allow you to do that computing. Right, because of the programming, the type of programming that you did. It's too difficult yeah. to program now with PCs around. There isn't this 
plethora of, of programs. Right, that's and true. program languages that yeah. are simple program languages. Yeah. And so you could use Visual Basic, but that's too complicated. Right. I could not repeat. Now what we do then today? No. Well, that's an interesting uh, point. Thank you very much, Ted.